Welcome to Rectified Radio, from the latest in crypto news, to educating the public. We aim to fight FUD and have fun talking blockchain. Fun segments, interactive guests, and more. This is Rectified Radio, powered by FiberVid. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Rectified Radio podcast. I am Alex, the one that talks too much, and I am with my co-host, Krish, the smart one, a.k.a. (laughs) Crypto Minion. What's going on, bro? Not much, man. It's Friday night. I'm just kind of pumped. I don't know why, but I'm just like too much pumped. Yeah, man. (laughs) (laughs) I was like so sleepy, and then you're like, are we going to podcast? And I was like, yeah, of course. And then now now I'm pumped up, man. I'm ready to... (laughs) <laughs> I'm ready to get right into it, man. You know, the, the the first story reminded me of the meal that I ate, Chipotle. You ever had Chipotle? Oh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> and you know what Chipotle is known to do, right? Uh, you're talking about one of their scandals from last year? Or... <laughs> nah, bro, I'm telling you what it does to your stomach. Ah, no, I'm good with it. I'm I'm really strong, I guess. I ain't gonna lie. I ate Chipotle today, and my stomach is going a little crazy. And it inspired the first story that I want to talk about, which is yeah. EOS. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah, because you know, I mean, everything, <laughs> everything they call a crap coin that's not Bitcoin. But I hate how nobody talks mess about EOS. Yet they are a legit poop coin. You know, and yes. Coinbase flagged EOS on degraded performance twice in three days, and nobody says anything. Any little thing about Tron, people are like, "Oh, Tron's a scam. Tron's a crap yeah. coin." But here you go, freaking EOS is like a whole freaking bowl of Chipotle with extra beans and extra hot sauce, man. Tell me about it, man. Four billion dollars. Four billion dollars. What have you done with it? Four billion dollars. Yep. It says the EOS network is currently experiencing degraded performance levels. EOS sends have been temporarily disabled and receive may be delayed. Buys and sells of EOS within Coinbase are functioning normally. We'll keep you posted as services return to normal. Come on, man. Yes. So that's their CPU issue. I mean, it's like whenever you stake EOS, uh, EOS, EOS. Whatever you want to call it, just like yes. Tron, you get some CPU <laughs> time and you can send free transactions on the network, right? But how they do it is the mo- their model is dif- a bit different uh, in the sense that if, like in Tron, if you stake, uh, like say, 10,000 Tron and you want to unstake it after three days, you can do it instantly. But on EOS, even if you were to stake your EOS for a year and you want to unstake it, you have to wait three more days for it to actually unstake. Hmm. and be in your wallet so people just take like a little bit of like i mean if they do say play 20 or 30 games of dice on eos every day they would probably stake like three or four eos for it and you get all these extra cpu time because the network isn't jammed so you're really good but if i were to like do a script or i would i were to rent some uh cpu time from their rex which is like trans token goodies so you could just rent it, the resources, for like really cheap. Mm-hmm. And I could launch an attack on the network, which would basically mean that I, I would consume so much CPU that all your free, like the, all this free CPU that you get would all like diminish. And you'd be in the negative because you've already used so much. Let's do it. Like, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I mean, that's doable, right? It's, it's not hacking. It's not actually like like doing like something bad or illegal you're just using the resources that you paid for in the rent right like, like their rent thing which is called rex apparently but yeah well you that's just why do I... that and the network would go to shit <laughs> that's why you're not the smart care. one dude i did not know any of that and didn't you did you were telling me earlier didn't you say they they've tried those type of things with tron and it just doesn't function well yeah, I mean, there's nothing you can do about it because, I mean, with Tron, you're just freezing everything. Because, you know, I mean, if you need your Tron, if you need to sell it, if it pumps or, like, it just goes to, like, $2, like, <laughs> like, in, like overnight, 
you can unstake it, you can sell it, or you can, if you need some money, you can always unstake some portion of it mm-hmm. and use it. But with EOS, it's not the same. You have to wait three more days after once you click the unstake button. And like at that, those three days, you're like in, in the limbo where you don't have, have your EOS and you don't have your resources. That's... You know? Yeah, that's and same thing with uh, I don't know if it's ICX or Icon, one of those. They take ten days, bro, ten days oh, to freaking unstake your coins. That's ridiculous. Yes, it's there's IOS too. IOS is like so crappy. Like one of the uh, I, I was trying all the DPoS networks to see which one was better, and I I, I got into IOS and I voted for an SR. I don't know what they call them, like block producer or SR whatever. I voted for him, and they just went rogue. Like they were not upgrading, they were not sending me my rewards or anything. So I'm like, okay, I need to uh, like vote for a different producer, right? Because I mean, that's what you do as a, as a mm-hmm. like I guess a good citizen. Like whenever you're uh, like the rep that you're voting for is not doing good, you just vote for somebody else so that they can attack the network. So I mean, if like ten, uh, like I, let's let's just talk about Bitcoin network. So say if those mining pools that hold like more than 51% of the hash power, if they start doing something bad to the network, your your responsibility is to like, you know, take your hash power away from that pool. Right. So that they don't have the power to attack. And the same thing goes for like, like DPoS, but it's just like your stake. You just take your stake away and you vote for somebody that's doing the good thing, or doing the right thing. <laughs> but I tried, with IOS, it would not work because I mean, you have to unstake it. Like just to vote for a different guy, you have to unstake it wait seven days in yeah. the limbo and then you finally like so for seven days you're out of rewards you're not you don't have your coins you don't have anything you don't even have the resources so yeah, they, that's crazy man and and we complain about tron's sr structure it exactly kind of gives you a little bit of perspective now with seeing these other dpos type blockchains and i'm actually really proud of justin sun and how he handled the last issue when uh-huh. they started voting themselves in, they admitted to it, but they said just for these other dudes who were not upgrading their nodes, and they yeah. removed their their votes off of that after. So there's still some issues there, and I know many SRs are concerned about it, and rightfully so, but at least they're taking a step in the right direction. And I just hope that more emphasis is put with the community and we actually make a good vote that benefits and any type of enhancement benefits the yes, blockchain and I, for everyone. Dude, when Justin said that, I, I read something about a different coin. I'm not going to mention its name, but their, their uh, governance structure is some, somewhat like, so right now, even if somebody doesn't upgrade their system, like, like what happened with Tron a few days back, uh, people are still voting for them because they are getting their rewards, right? But you could uh, like implement a governance system where if your SR doesn't uh, p- participate in the governance, like in votes, or upgrade their systems as needed, or decided by the whole blockchain, like all the all the block producers, what you can do is you can slash the rewards by half, which means the users' rewards would also go down by half. And they'd stop voting for them. Yeah, yeah. So they'll just go to another one because, I mean, they could make, but most of those guys are ones that already voted themselves in, so we'd have to think of probably something a little bit more different. But I like where your where your head's going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean they either like you know, but they do it for something though. I mean they they even if they are voting themselves in with like say four hundred million trump. Oh yeah, that's true. They'd get half they of was, their own stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay, and they miss the next sense. one. They they miss the next deadline. It's half, so now now it's a quarter. So they are either forced to do it themselves if they're voting themselves in, or if people are voting them in, those people would just leave them and they would no longer be SRs. I really like that structure. I mean, some somebody else is coming up with it, but we'll see. That's a darn good idea. We should propose that. Definitely propose that. So yeah. the next story that I wanted to bring up is Visa granting Coinbase power to issue Bitcoin debit cards. Like everybody was like, oh, snap, this is awesome. Mm. So awesome right like my first thought was what does this mean for spend pundix and crypto.com because this is essentially like you go to the store spend your bitcoin and it automatically converts it to dollars right or am i mistaken there yes yes it will just be like the regular so it would be like the regular coinbase card 
you have Bitcoin in your Coinbase wallet, you go swipe your card and it just sells your Bitcoin or approves the transaction. But instead of using, say, Wavecrest Bank or Metropolitan, that uh, I think crypto, crypto right. uses that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So instead of using that, Coinbase would itself be the bank. So there's, there, there's no wow. middle party there. So, uh, I mean, I guess they could uh, increase your rewards, more cashbacks, lesser fees, uh, maybe no foreign transaction fees. Uh, more benefits yeah that's the thing right there the the fees because everybody you know all the noobs went to coinbase and we didn't really have that many options it's great to cash out but their fees are absolutely ridiculous so i'm wondering are they going to take advantage since they're the only ones right now and take even more fees or are they going to lay back now that they're getting an extra source of income with that i think they're going to lay back and that's what they said in their in their tweet I think is that they can uh, give more rewards or uh, bring a better structure to how things work. Because right now it's not just Coinbase and their fees; it's just it's also the bank that's that's like a middleman between them and Visa. Right. Honestly, I mean, comparing them to Crypto.com, I like Crypto.com a million times better, and they're yes. newer and they've got more features. Obviously, Coinbase probably has more money for sure, but. Mm-hmm. What if someone steals your card, you know, and they start spending your Bitcoin? That's why I kind of like the top up feature with the Crypto.com card, because if someone yeah. steals your because <laughs> sometimes I only <laughs> put like twenty dollars at a time from my account and top it up in my card. If someone steals my card, like, OK, you might get a coffee and a couple movie tickets out of it, but you're not going to get anything else. That kind of yeah. makes me feel secure. So imagine when they're spending your Bitcoin and then there's a fraudulent transaction in your account, like using this Coinbase card, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like, dude, that's, that can be problem, especially with Bitcoin being so volatile. I mean, I know they own a ton of Bitcoin in reserve, but you know, something to think about there. Yeah. Visa would probably cover you in terms of the dollar, but what if Bitcoin goes up by like $5,000, right? I mean, it (laughs) could take two months. Yep. Oh, that would suck. <laughs> exactly, because point. these uh, disputes, sometimes they take 30, 60, 90 days even. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you got to be a little bit weary. That's why I, I stick to uh, Crypto.com and my Ruby Red card, because not only does it look awesome, but it's got the benefits. And keep my crypto, my crypto until I sell it and then use the cash on a Visa card. Yeah. But nevertheless, yeah. I-, I, I still like the Coinbase card. Like, that's going to be awesome. It's a great big move and in the I space. I think it's, it's a good start. I mean, like once Coinbase showed uh, us like that Visa would grant you licenses if you're just following regulations and even though you deal with crypto, uh, I mean, I think it's a good thing for something like crypto.com because now they can maybe start doing their own application for the Visa license, you know, something to look forward to. Right. So I got my, my Bitcoin is the future shirt. Oh, you and got I'm it! Excited! I'm gonna wear it on my next live stream. I just paid for my just Hololit cap yesterday, and I think it's not coming, getting to me until next week. But I can't wait, man. Guys, we're talking about CryptoBantam.com. This is our go-to place for crypto merchandise. I on our last podcast was talking about how I was watching Back to the Future, and then they have a T-shirt called Bitcoin is the Future. And uh, I'm looking at this Just Hold It cap right now. I actually had a t-shirt with the Just Hold It. I got it really cheap, I think on Amazon. But it it sucked, bro. There's like holes in it and stuff now. <laughs> and that, that's the thing about Crypto Bantam. Like they have good quality stuff. Like they're the, the, the merchants that they work with or however that process works, it's good quality. So... Not only do you have cool, unique designs compared to other crypto clothing stores, you also have good quality clothes and you have the ability to pay in cash or your crypto. So guys, check out crypto.com. Well, obviously we want them to check out crypto.com, but cryptobantum.com for the clothing. (laughs) And then we'll link link that hat. So if y'all want to get that hat. I was just looking at, the only reason I checked it out is because you mentioned it and I'm like, okay, maybe I should know what we're talking about. So I, I go in there and it's just like a bunch of cool stuff. I mean, the pricing isn't bad. It's like $15 to $20 for a t-shirt, you know, like $30 for a hat. I mean, it's just it's just like regular pricing, just like shopping on Amazon. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, you might, you might like, you might get some cheaper stuff, but the quality is going to be cheaper. But in regards to like 
the competition in crypto apparel they're right up there in terms of competitive pricing and of course their like designs it. are top of the line so guys check out cryptobantam.com buy yourself something and if you do if you buy something let us know we'll give you a gift on behalf of uh, ourselves <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> buy stuff you can do that <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, man, another thing that I wanted to talk about, because I ran into this clip, for those of you who are casual crypto listeners, there's a lot of scams in the blockchain space. So many freaking scams. So first off, if you're new to crypto and anytime someone says, hey, send me this crypto and I'm going to send you more, that's like the equivalent of... You know, sponsoring the Nigerian prince that's going to give you like a million dollars. Do not fall for that. Have you ever been scammed, bro, in crypto? I'm um, dead tried. Uh, there was <laughs> so many. I mean, the only way I got scammed was like from ICOs that I put some money in and yeah. they never like showed up. Some never showed up. Some never even launched. Some showed up for like a few, paid themselves so much money, like as, as CEOs and as coders. They just ran out of funds in like a few months. And they gave up. Wow. <laughs> there have been a few like that. But I mean, like direct scams, like you get all these things. I mean, the first thing to remember is nobody's going to give you free money. Like they, they except, can come up with except all these Except us, bro. Schools. We get free money all the time. What are you yeah, talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like somebody's <laughs> just giving you money for, like, you know, listening or just retweeting. And yeah, you're good. But if somebody's like, okay, I'm going to send you like I have some fun stock in, a, stock in an exchange. If you could withdraw it for me, I will give you half of it. All that kind of crap, you know. It's just like different version of the Nigerian prince. Yeah, it's like, and come those, on. It's like, come yeah. on. A random person in Telegram comes to you. Hello, good sir. Yeah. <laughs> How are you today? It's like <laughs> all these robotic responses. So yeah. Yeah, I, I got a recording. So I was like, man, I like to screw with these people because they're going to waste my time. I'm going to waste their time. And on telegram is the worst so for those of you people who are getting used to telegram do not give them any information they will be imposters of projects so like our ceo founder uh, steven zambron there's so many people who make like (laughs) parody accounts Mm -hmm. about him or they make fake accounts and they copy everything exactly maybe one letter off that you won't be able to tell so this dude, fake Steve, ends up being like some guy from Africa, probably. He he messages me, and I just mess around with him, and I tell him, okay, I'll send you some Bitcoin, but you have to um, give me the address. But I'm like, no, call me. So I actually got him on the phone. I, and let's he, play it. Let's play he, it. Yeah, okay. I'll, yeah, I got it here. It's a minute long. But dude is a moron. Like, really? You don't think I know how Steve (laughs) sounds like? Let's listen to it so you guys can see what what I said to him. All right. Okay. What what is it for? What's the money for? What? I, I don't get it, man. Okay, what's the address? What's your address again? T... I don't see it on Telegram. I'll send it to you on Telegram. I sent it to you just now. It's not working. I can't see anything. You're gonna have to. My screen went black. You're gonna have to tell it to me. I'm right. I have a piece of paper right now, so I can write it down. I think. I think it should. It should make use of your glasses. This photo. Yeah, maybe you're right. But you don't pay <laughs> me enough to, to to get some glasses. So come on, just just tell it to me, and I'll send it. I'll send it as soon as I get home. T. T. You can you can hear my daughter in the background's like you already have glasses, Dad. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, that was funny, man. I'm like, because I was trying to tell him like, oh yeah, my Telegram doesn't work, and I would keep deleting his messages. And I'm like, yeah, it's not working. So I'm like, tell me, tell me the address. And I just wanted him to tell me that long freaking address just to bug him. Yeah, everything. <laughs> he gave up. Long story short, he gave up. So moral of the story, guys, if you've got the time, screw around with these people, but never give your crypto information to 
someone asking for it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Before we wrap it up, I'm a little bit upset. And this is where I get more passionate about Vibravid. They took my boy Crypto Tone and gave him another strike on his YouTube channel. Can you believe that? They did? Yeah, man. YouTube. Like the dude doesn't he just makes videos like talking about crypto like youtube's like picking on him on picking on him now and you know he's got a good base he's got a good subscriber amount he makes you know some sort of income from the platform and now they're messing with that and that's precisely one of the big reasons that vibravid is an inspiration to us because it's something you know i know we touched on decentralized social media platforms Mm -hmm. there's you know a lot of learning to do to see how it's going to work in the future but man free speech is a huge thing and that makes me sad like there was a huge outrage about it right about a, about a month ago or maybe month two months ago like yeah. everybody like crying about it and I mean, and then they went I mean, back i thought you'd <laughs> listen yeah. they did they did i mean you what know what's hell? gonna happen i mean you already see twitter i don't know why people like jack is cool and stuff but he always censors everyone, so people are like bipolar when it comes to Jack because he likes Bitcoin. But then, mm-hmm. like all these cool people are getting censored. I honestly think that there's going to be tens of hundreds of thousands of new users coming onto Vibravid just because they want to listen to their to the people that they follow that talk about things like you know politics, conspiracies, uh, free speech, man. If you want to, yeah, you know. If you want to talk about whatever you want to talk about, you know, as long as you're not breaking the law, like yeah. post it on Vibravid. You want to talk mm-hmm. about how the moon landings were faked? <laughs> yep. Then Lost go the ahead, man. I will watch those videos all day. <laughs> <laughs> but I will not comment on Twitter, man, because they'll get on my butt once I start saying that. <laughs> yes. I mean, Jack likes it because he also makes money off of it i think square made the most money from selling bitcoins uh, last year right or last quarter something like that mm-hmm. they worship him on one end and then on the other end they hate him because they're he embraces <laughs> bitcoin but then people talking about bitcoin he wants to censor them and i'm not gonna yeah. say he i'm gonna say the twitter algorithms and all that stuff but uh, ultimately he's a ceo so you know everyone blames him yep <laughs> So we've got a lot of interesting dynamics coming along with Vibravid. Every week we have enhancements. The devs are working really hard in getting new things such as, you know, upload UI, uh, more interactions with uh, followers and follow counts. Like there's so much. So we want to dedicate a whole episode and we'll bring Steve on next time and talk about what the future of Vibravid looks like, the life of a startup, which is what we are and how we plan to make it yeah we're just not we're not gonna take like individual questions like a regular ama where just steve steve comes in and he just keeps talking and talking and we filter out all these questions that he wants to answer because god knows steve can talk yeah (laughs) yeah, this will be a dialogue for sure and i'm i'm kind of sick of amas like that's 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 been the thing in crypto since i think middle of 2017 when the whole ico thing started and it's always about this guy comes in, mutes the room, you know, he, he talks and he talks and he talks and we're just listening out. We don't even know who the questions came from. <laughs> these are all these generic it's questions. It's like toss some softballs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like we kind of like actually like look into the Beatscoin room, the Beatscoin Twitter and check out all the comments from you guys and everybody, like all the Bitcoin users, Viberbit users, I mean. And we, we're going to actually, like try to big biggest concerns instead of taking those softballs right right yeah because we want to get to the point where we're noticed by the big guys and we've got all the tools necessary to get there it just takes time and you know when you don't have millions and millions of dollars time just Mm. takes a little longer (laughs) yeah but we do have some pretty good users and they support vibravid on twitter on telegram and even though our community is not as big as, say, XRP or Tron itself, we do see some, you know, like like that guy retweeted, like how all the comments were about Vibravid on that uh, Cat X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk. Let's talk are... about that for a second, man. Let's go ahead and expose that. So, 
they are talking the the cat x exchange which is an eh, average exchange i've never used it they say mm-hmm. let's have a contest and we come out of the gates like boom like everyone's supporting mm-hmm. us everyone's commenting like beats coin yeah beats coin tron project beats coin and then we're like kicking butt like 60 percent of the votes all of a sudden like every each of the other projects they buy votes and they're like doing airdrops and stuff like that no real true supporters are just buying votes and you can do that you can pay a fee and at the same time like should we play that ball game we talked to cat x and they were like they were like oh we don't care they 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 don't care yeah they don't care like we 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 don't make any rules for this contest they're like oh that's kind of weak and for a second, you know, it crossed our mind, like, hey, well, should we buy votes so we can get uh, listed on here? It may be worth it. But then we thought about it and we're like, nah, man, that's weak. bro. Like, it's weak. It's, weak. it's essentially cheating. And then come to find out it's against the, the free listing is only against their native token trading pair, which is like it has less volume than Beatscoin itself. <laughs> It's like their oh, volume. Okay. Yeah, it's like their volume for like a day is like five hundred bucks in in their token. So that's as delusional, a trader, man. Yeah, that, that is deceiving users. I mean, I thought like it was going to be a BTC pair. Care. Yeah, yeah. Like the exchange doesn't care about fake boats. Means their volume is most likely fake, right? And uh, against their token pairing with like five hundred dollars in volume, that's that sucks. <laughs> we don't even need that. <laughs> exactly. So. After we explain that to many of uh, the people in our community, they're like, oh, yeah, screw that then. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, for those of you who were wondering about that and listen to this podcast, that is the 100% truth on that. I think we'll probably tweet out a statement or something how like we're not pursuing that. But anyways, man, I want to say uh, again, thank you to Crypto Bantam for being one of our sponsors of course, vibravit.io. Go create an account. Follow us. Upload your content. If you're a musician, make some music. We're going to be interviewing some people in the music sector who are also in crypto. Our boy Michael Nye said he would come on to the podcast, and I know he's making music. It's it's going to be good stuff, man. And, and like one of the really cool features of Vibravid is the bounty structure. So you, you can uh, have your videos in there or your audio and you can put up bounty. So if somebody like comes, watches your videos or listens to your music, you, you can pay them. That way you got like a bunch of engagements and users coming your way, new users that don't even know you. And you could even promote yourself, your brand, or, you know, maybe just your referral link. You know, talk about a platform and throw in a referral link and get people to click on it. Yeah, that's what uh, Crypto Tone does. And he puts his crypto.com link in there. Mm-hmm. And then he he's consistently getting people that get the card. So I know crypto.com loves him just like they should yeah. love us because we talk about them a lot, too. And, <laughs> you know, he gets, you know, even though we don't have ad revenue established yet, like he's making money because Dude, I, he I spent- got Tommy into it. Yeah, he spent like 15 cents, <laughs> you know, okay, let's just say like $5 for like mm-hmm. two, 300 people to listen to his, or to watch his video. And he, what if he got like just two referrals right there? That's a hundred bucks that he made yeah. on, on the crypto.com. That is a good strategy. Referrals. I mean, yeah, we gotta, we gotta do something like that. We gotta put our, um, we gotta put our podcast on video style too. <laughs> <laughs> but hey you guys can do it too you know just try it out yeah why not it's it's free all right guys well until next time we will see you peace peace thank you for tuning into this episode of the rectified radio podcast stay tuned for our next episode and make sure to check us out on vibervid.io for exclusive content peace about that action, boss.